what's up you guys welcome back so yes 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 I know I'm making another crypto video but uh, you have to excuse me because there's just so much that's going on in the crypto space lately you have to admit that uh, it's just been a pretty exciting time in the crypto space right so I just had to make another video and in case you forgot we had the whole Elon Musk tweet storm ordeal which uh, led to a crash previously uh, and then we had an even bigger crash due to some bad news coming out of China uh, and then now the crypto space is recovering a bit so uh, it's still down compared to where it was before but it's slowly bouncing back and and you know during this latest crash I had a lot of friends kind of panic messaging me and uh, telling me how uh, whether or not they should like sell or not so they're debating on whether they should panic sell and I can't believe I have to remind people of this but I'm gonna go ahead and say it again right here uh, don't buy high and sell low you're supposed to do it the other way around right you're supposed to buy low and sell high so uh, you know when I hear people panic and say that they should sell at the bottom uh, that just means that to me that just sounds like you haven't been in the crypto space for a long time because for people like myself and I'm sure a lot of you guys who have been in the crypto space for a long time like a 20-30% drop is not like the actually that big of a deal uh, but you know if you're inexperienced I can definitely see how that would lead to a lot of panic um, but uh, you know if you are like invested and you're like investing more money than you're willing to lose then that's probably a bad situation to be in and definitely would not recommend you do that uh, or if you use leverage which I know is tempting I know some like crypto exchanges let you go up to like 100x leverage which is absolutely crazy so my recommendation is that I would highly recommend against using leverage unless you're an actual pro level day trader and even pro level day traders so I've heard I'm not a day trader by the way but so I've heard uh, even pro level day traders don't go above 5x leverage so you know if you're going like 100 or anywhere close to 100x leverage you're just asking for trouble at that point right so yeah don't ever invest more money than you're willing to lose and uh, don't use super high leverage that's my recommendation right so for everyone else uh, who are like not using leverage and who hasn't invested that much money uh, for everyone else who are long-term hodlers like myself uh, well you're probably used to this volatility by now uh, so I would probably you know still want to address some of the fear uncertainty doubt though because I know a lot of you are relatively new and you're not used to this volatility right so I still want to address some of the FUD uh, that's been throwing around in particular with this news regards to uh, with regards to China banning Bitcoin uh, supposedly right so uh, for those of you who haven't heard, last week we got fresh news that China's ramping up its crackdown on illegal Bitcoin mining. And first, I just have to point out that uh, all these news outlets that were reporting that China is banning all Bitcoin mining, that's simply not true, okay? So the way that it works in China is that if you mine Bitcoin, you have to let the government know. Uh, so you guys know the Chinese government by now, they're a bit of a control freak to say the very least, right? So uh, they don't want these Bitcoin mines to be like underground and be unreported because, um, you know, that could potentially be a way for people to like evade taxes or just like running them without people knowing and escaping the monetary system which the Chinese government really doesn't like uh, so I assume the process uh, just involves getting some sort of certification or license from the Chinese government if you're trying to set up a rig in China uh, but throughout the years there have been more and more illegal uh, crypto mines being set up uh, as the prices have gone up so the Chinese government really doesn't like that so they're trying to crack down on those uh, so they're not shutting down every single mine they're just shutting down the illegal ones the ones that have gone unreported uh, so if you think about it logically it doesn't make sense for them to shut down every single mine because uh, China does control more than 50% of Bitcoin's hash power uh, so if they shut down all the mines they'd be giving away a lot of control a lot of that power so uh, not that anyone can fully control Bitcoin anyways but they have even less control of Bitcoin if they decide to shut down all the Bitcoin mines uh, in fact in the article that I shared earlier uh, in case you missed it the subtitles mentions that crypto mining operations are already leaving China for other places like North America uh, so that's definitely one thing that the Chinese government doesn't want to do which is give up more control or give up power right so uh, if you panic because of the China FUD, if you just did like 60 seconds of research, you will realize that this is actually not the first time that China has 
banned Bitcoin. Uh, so they've already banned institutions from offering crypto services as early as 2013 and again in 2017 uh, and again now. So you know, China banning Bitcoin is pretty much the oldest trick in the book by now. And it boggles my mind to uh, see how people still react in this like way when China decides to come out with more news of like banning Bitcoin and it still manages to drive the price down somehow every time this news comes out. And I think it's just a sheer amount of new people that we've been getting joining the crypto community, which I want to reiterate is a good thing in my opinion. We want more people to join the crypto community obviously, uh, but the downside is that the newbies tend to not know all this stuff that has happened before. So they tend to panic when uh, something like the China FUD or like when Elon Musk tweets or whatever, right? So. Uh, guaranteed in a year there will probably be a similar story where China bans Bitcoin once again uh, and the price goes down again because the people that would be in the crypto space then weren't in the crypto space now or before last week. So that's just the way it is unfortunately. Uh, that's just like a symptom of the crypto community getting bigger and bigger. We always have new people and the new people aren't used to what we've been through, right? So uh, if you really analyze Bitcoin though, or crypto in general, rather just ask yourself, uh, what has fundamentally changed when Bitcoin was at 60K or when ETH was at 4K? Well, in my opinion, nothing. Right, so nothing negative as far as I know. So I already told you this China news wasn't new and Elon Musk's comments about the environmental concerns surrounding Bitcoin, well that's not new either. So we've been hearing these arguments for the longest time. I'll tell you what is new though. So what is new is that Goldman Sachs now considers Bitcoin an asset class. Uh, now normally I don't really care about what Goldman Sachs says anyways, but I just thought it was funny how almost exactly a year ago Goldman Sachs said, and I quote, Bitcoin is not an asset class nor a suitable investment. Uh, so literally a complete 180 degree turn from what they said a year ago and Goldman Sachs literally flips flops more than a politician. Uh, so uh, next up we have Ray Dalio who is the world's largest head fund manager uh, for Bridgewater Associates uh, who in an interview said that not only does he have some Bitcoin he also prefers Bitcoin uh, to bonds. Uh, so Ray Dalio has joined the ranks among others like Kevin O'Leary who was also super anti-crypto back in the day uh, but has now flipped to a Bitcoin believer. And this is in my personal opinion but I honestly believe for everyone who understands both the technology behind cryptocurrency and the economic impacts of cryptocurrency is no doubt a crypto believer. Uh, so anyone who is super anti-crypto is fundamentally lacking understanding in at least one of these areas, maybe even both. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's just my opinion though. Feel free to disagree if you want, but that's just what I think. So for example, I think that uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger would obviously understand the ex uh, economic implications. Well, that was hard to say. Uh, so they would obviously understand the economic implications of an asset or currency, but they're super anti-crypto uh, because they don't understand the technological aspect of it. Uh, so they don't understand things like blockchain, like DeFi, like NFTs. Uh, that stuff is only possible with Bitcoin, Ethereum or whatever it is and it's not possible without cryptocurrency, right? So uh, to make this more concrete, let me share with you a comment that I got on the video where I said I disagree with Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's opinions on crypto. Uh, so uh, let me read you this comment and let's try and dissect this comment afterwards, okay? So uh, good bro says, uh, why disagree with the GOATs at investing? Buffett and Munger are totally right since Bitcoin is a non-productive asset and the only way of increasing its price is betting that someone will pay more than you did. So it's natural that people will be promoting it to gain more on their investment. Uh, you just lost a subscriber since I don't want to follow people that love to speculate and follow the trend basically like gambling like Warren uh, says. I believe that these people won't be able to survive in the investment world in the next 10 years. Uh, hey, at least he was relatively polite about it, which I appreciate. Uh, and I do appreciate dissenting comments, but I must say that this comment uh, is factually wrong on so many levels and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, so first before we begin dissecting the comments, uh, once again I would ask this person, uh, good bro, how much he actually understands crypto. So this is a pattern that I see with a lot of crypto 
crypto critics where they they're criticizing something that they don't actually understand. Uh, and I mean that uh, the fundamental technology behind it. Uh, so I don't mean like trading it or the market or uh, anything like that. I mean like the fundamental technology behind it. And if the answer is I don't understand that much, uh, well, maybe you shouldn't be criticizing something that you don't understand, right? Uh, but anyways, first part, why disagree with the GOATs on investing? Uh, GOAT stands for the greatest of all time in case you were wondering. Uh, so why disagree with the GOATs of investing, which is Warren Buffett? Uh, well, the answer is simple because I I think he's wrong. Uh, so I don't know how else you want me to say this, right? You disagree with someone because you think they're wrong. Isn't that, that's that's pretty obvious, right? And it really doesn't matter whether they're Warren Buffett or the Queen or like whatever, right? And you really wanna avoid idolizing like a specific individual. So Warren Buffett is no doubt one of the greatest, if not the greatest investor of all time, but he doesn't have a perfect record, uh, nor is he gonna be right on absolutely everything. Uh, so I think everyone has their own circle of competence, which is a Warren Buffett teaching, by the way. Uh, so everyone has their own circle of competence. And Warren Buffett has himself admitted that technology is not within his circle of competence. So we're talking about someone who has built their entire fortune off of traditional industries like energy, retail, insurance, banks, etc. Uh, so when it comes to crypto specifically, you wouldn't go to your great grandpa for advice on which tech startup is the next big thing. So I don't think that you should be taking Warren Buffett's advice on crypto, uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, with regards to the second part about Bitcoin being a non-productive speculative asset, again, this is a fundamental misunderstanding of Bitcoin's purpose in my opinion. Uh, so Bitcoin is a store of value. So as Michael Saylor put it, uh, you don't put food in the fridge because you want to sell your food to a, a, the highest bidder later. You put your food in the fridge because you have a feeling that you might get hungry at a later point, right? So you don't spend all your money at once uh, because you realize that if you do, then you won't have any money for later. So you can see how humans have a natural tendency and a natural need to store value or to store wealth. Uh, so given that the ability to store wealth is something that is worthwhile to you, can we at least agree upon that, right? Can we at least agree that store of value is something that is valuable in of itself, right? So given that you believe that store of value is something that is worthwhile, now you have to decide how to store your wealth. So if you're like most people, you keep your money in a savings account, uh, which you can go ahead and check the interest on that, but it's probably going to be lower than 2%. Uh, so just to let you know, the average inflation rate per year is 2%. So if you're making less than 2% a year on your savings account, you're actually making a negative real return, uh, meaning that you're actually losing buying power as time goes on. So your wealth is actually going down by putting money in a savings account if you can't beat inflation. Uh, so you could buy stocks, bonds, or real estate, but with stocks, uh, you're exposed to operational risk within a company. Uh, with bonds, you're not doing that much better because uh, bonds have really low yields these days as well. With real estate, you have to worry about fluctuations in a specific market, and it's not that liquid, right? You can't really like buy and sell real estate very easily. Uh, so there might be fees associated with that as well, right? So uh, historically, the preferred way to store value is using gold or silver, uh, but those come with its own problems like uh, gold being really heavy, hard to transport, it's hard to divide into units, and it's potentially confiscatable, so it's not that easy to hide. So, uh, you know, somebody could steal it or like the government, if you have a, if you live in a place with like a really rogue or bad government, they could potentially, you know, come to your house and take your gold, right? So, uh, there's a lot of problems with potentially storing all your money in gold. Uh, so if you look at all the properties of what makes a good store of value, I believe that if you're honest with yourself and you actually try to make like a list of properties that you want and you try to make like pros and cons for each asset, uh, I honestly would believe that you would come to the conclusion that Bitcoin is the best way to go. Uh, and don't just take my word for it. If you don't believe me, that's fine. Uh, ask Kevin O'Leary, ask Ray Dalio, uh, ask Elon Musk, right? So, uh, you know, all these people, are they all just crazy, right? So you're saying that Warren Buffett is the greatest of all time, sure. Uh, and you're saying that he's right about this. So uh, that necessarily means that you're also saying that all these other people are wrong, right? So, you know, just weigh... It on a balance of probabilities and see which one is uh, more likely, right? So if you don't believe me, that's fine, but uh, I'm gonna move on. And 
Uh, lastly, addressing the final part of this comment, uh, if you think I'm speculating or gambling with crypto, you clearly have not been watching this channel for a very long time, uh, and you clearly have not watched any of my other videos uh, where I talk about crypto. Uh, and if you disagree with me, you're welcome to unsubscribe and put yourself back into the echo chamber full of only people that you agree with, uh, because you know, my gosh, someone I subscribe to disagreed with something that I believe in. Uh, personally, I think it's healthy to hear people that have different opinions, uh, but that's just me. And by the way, talking about the next 10 years, let me just remind you of how Bitcoin has performed in the past 10 years. And you can see that it has absolutely smashed pretty much every index fund or every like bond or whatever out there, or even gold, right? So, uh, you know, maybe it'll change your mind. No? Okay, well, I tried. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!